Back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Back once again, favourite show, favourite podcast, favourite team. Fully booked. The socials are at full underscore e underscore books on the Instagram. Is it the same, same for the Twitter box? Yep, that's correct. Um, we're also on the SoundCloud. Is it same again? Fully booked on the SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud and iTunes. Yeah, the podcast app on the iTunes. On the, um, <laughs> if you've got any Apple devices. Yeah, we're back again. So, the last episode, which was episode five. <coughs> sorry, guys. Last episode, which was episode five. We spoke about um, the secure way, and we said we'll break this down into two parts, which we have. So this is the second part of that. So for those with the with the book attached, we're now on page two four three, and we're starting with the chapter "Working Things Out: Five Secure Principles for Dealing with Conflict." <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a, it's cold out there. <laughs> um, cold streets. Right. French, I'll let you lead on the next part. Um, I mean, I can lead. I'm happy to lead, but. It's about secures and you like you're getting at me for the rest of this. It's a, it's now let me book. finish. It's let me book. finish. Let me finish. Okay. You have been getting at me being avoidant or whatever. So it's time for you guys to shine. So I'm gonna put it on you. Okay. Just, just so in the first question. So the first bit that I thought mm-hmm. was relevant. It's the very first part, say. So can fighting make make us happier? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to lead into. But the first uh, excerpt that I thought was worthy of speaking about and going into a question is a major conception about conflict in romantic relationships <coughs> is that people in good relationships should fight very little. There's an exception that if well matched, you and your partner will see eye to eye on most matters and argue rarely, if at all. Sometimes arguments are even considered to be proof that two people are incompatible or that a relationship is derailing. So my question being is, do you think fighting is beneficial in a relationship and what have been the benefits and the pitfalls if so? If you've been in, if you've been in many. And that goes to you, P, then to you, Mace. So I missed part of that question, sorry. Um, what are the pitfalls of... Do you think fighting's beneficial in a relationship? Does this guy listen? I swear. He's listening, he's listening. <laughs> do, <laughs> do you ah. think fighting is beneficial in a relationship? Yeah. And what are the pitfalls of, of, of kind of... I don't want to call it disruptive, but quarrelling in a relationship. Is there been benefits and has there been pitfalls? Um, benefits? Let's give, give you an example. Give, what I'd say is give an overall view and then maybe give one as personal to you. For the people at home. I'm actually, you know what, actually, when I actually read the, um, this part, I couldn't, I'm trying to think, no, I, did, I couldn't think of any examples, but I mean, no, I couldn't think of any examples, um, but I did obviously take some notes. Um, I mean, I think it's a great point and one people assume is not the case because um, things may seem rosy on the outside in relation to um, people and obviously their couples, but obviously people do naturally um, argue. I think it's, I think it's common. I think it's something we can all agree on. Um, some really important things as well. I think it's a true test of your maturity um, your response, in my personal opinion, um, as to your tone, or whether it's a compromise, uh, a compromise, or whether you agree to disagree. Um, but how well you respond to conflict or disagreement, um, because as we know, not everyone was, not everyone um, responds well to like conflict or agreement. Yeah, it depends. Though I think how, I think because I think in a relationship, quarrelling, depending on the subject, is healthy. And I, the reason I say it's healthy, especially in the early stages of a relationship or early stages of maybe sharing each other's space, the reason I say it's healthy is because if you're quarrelling over what... I think the book is a good example of what temperature to set, the, to set the heat in the winter or whatever, it's all about compromise and you're learning how to compromise with your partner. Mm. So I think it is healthy to quarrel about those certain subjects. I think it becomes an issue. It might be a, a problem if you're quarrelling about... If you're quarrelling because actually you don't you you don't share the same viewpoints, um, which are more uh, how can I put it, which are more serious, mm. which are more. So I think last week or the week before we spoke about um, certain things we 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 wouldn't be willing to bend on certain yeah, yeah, yeah. like viewpoints within ourselves yeah, or certain principles. principles. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. So if there's if you're quarrelling about those, then you've got an issue. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Um, well, me personally, have I been in a... I think every relationship I've been in, I've, you, you quarrel and you argue with your partner. Mm. But more often than not, I mean, am I stubborn? I, f- I would like to think that I'm, I'm quite easygoing. But they're stubborn, man. Yeah? Stubborn. stubborn. Stop Behave lying. yourself. Stop lying. Behave yourself. You, and it, yeah. you lying, dog. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm easygoing, but 
there's certain things that I'm if I if I 100 feel that that's the right way to do it or it's the, or it's not or it's, yeah. then I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my guns and I'm gonna try and convince you with ex- <laughs> <laughs> with examples of why I'm right. Um, what else? I'm just trying to think of examples where I've kind of had arguments and stuff or quarrels about yeah. certain things in the relationship and I can't off the top of my head. But I know everyone at home will be in that situation. I think everyone, it, it could be something simple that you quarrel over, but it doesn't mean you don't care about each other. Do you know what I mean? And what's, what's key as well, when, if you do have an argument or a quarrel in a relationship, I think the key thing is to keep it to that particular point because when it starts to get a bit savage yeah. and nasty yeah. when... You, you stop actually discussing this, the actual point that was raised in the first place and now it's just a slanging war and mm, them mm, hurtful mm. comments coming or you get the protest behaviour or whatever do you get what I'm saying yeah absolutely what about yourself friends yeah no, I, I, I agree with your point to be honest with you I think uh, fighting can make you happier or I think it was a good point that you raised in terms of uh, when it's early on in the relationship and you're getting to know each other yeah. especially when like say for instance you move into a place together and you may do one thing and she may do the other or vice versa or whatever whatnot and you then learn how to adapt being around that person because you may have those little quarrels about just for something that sprang <coughs> to mind like um like la- leaving a towel on the bed yeah, like i'll yeah. go in the shower i'll come out i'll get on the bed cream or whatever whatnot mm-hmm. And I'll obviously I'll leave See, the. Like, look how dry the ankles are, Bridget. Hey, what, how are you see the ankles, though, bro? Uh, people don't know. People at home don't know how to see ankles. So you're lying. So you're lying. So it's just, it's just like, let, I'm talking. You're just gonna start uh, lying, man. I can't see the oh ankles, brother. Gosh. Um, yeah. So my point being, like, I'll come out, jump on the bed, cream or whatever, and I leave the the wet towel in the bed in it. But I'm just not thinking about. it. I'm like, ah, oh, cream, boom, whatever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, she should come in. Like, oh towel wet bed blah 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 and it becomes an argument but it's it's a minor thing so it's like okay now i've got to remember to not put the towel wet towel in the bed you know what i mean so those little things that help you develop the relationship so you know almost like your boundaries with each other do you know what i mean yeah i think the book refers to this as bread and butter conflicts is that correct yeah that's 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 something yeah bread and butter where it's just very minor things but it's almost you're learning how to you're learning um, how to how to be compatible with it, with another person yeah, it's in the that com- relationship. It's the compromise. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the compromise. I think it's a lot of it is the compromise and get as you said, learning to each other's nuances. But I think like I mean, just with bread and butter ones, I think I don't want to say they're quite simple as such, but I think if you can't come to a compromise on a bread and butter, then well, you're certainly onto a that's a lose lose situation because you're definitely not going to be able to turn that around. It's that- more so on the big arguments. Or the bigger um, issues, the issues, which for me is a kind of like test of char- character and definitely maturity. Because I think if there's no willingness, like on both sides, to kind of like come to a compromise or see each other's point of view, then there for me you got a def- you definitely got a problem. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Why are you both looking? No, at no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I. Agree. You're just concurring. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I definitely agree. I mean, like. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to so I think it says here like I remember, I remember reading the book I think it says something like let me see um, I think the sentence that kind of like resonated with myself was what does differentiate between couples and their sorry what does differentiate between couples and affect their satisfaction levels in their relationship is not how they disagree but how they disagree and what they disagree about mm, definitely yeah mm-hmm. so just just moving on in the book because I notice it does give quite a few examples um, in terms of how a secure person might kind of try to um, resolve a conflict. Yeah, so before you head into that, because there are a few examples mm-hmm. and we can go through a few of them, um, I think we should point out what the the, the secure principles of ma- for making conflict work. Now, these are things that you guys should know off the bat, so without reading the book can you you saw like second nature I thought it was uh, so, no, so, wait, <laughs> so, what, so what's the five what's the five um, what's the five it was the principles sh- don't read it alright don't read it um, look go on. my book's closed go on well for me you if you're in a relationship with someone for me that person they should be you should treat them they should so, you can always take the bible out and read off the principles <laughs> show, show, show concern for your like, like love thy neighbour almost like show concern for them 
Love thy neighbours doesn't mean they work. <laughs> You know what I mean? It Mason, you have my support. Yeah, sure. You have my support. What do you mean you have your support? You have well, support. I just asked you, what are the secure principles? Don't look at the book. What are all the right, five so secure principles? Oh, God, don't reveal a five. What I'm saying I don't even need to read all the <laughs> five. They comes all natural. All right, see so, it then. Right. No, 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 no. I'm going to show I'm gonna show concern for, and um, I'm going to I'm gonna always want to make sure my partner is in good spirits, in good like good health. I want to be there for them emotionally. And that's, a, that's the first principle. Is that the first? I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm that saying. I'm asking you a question. I'm, Bro, <laughs> what is this question time on Master? We're trying, 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 trying to catch us out as we trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop looking at the book. We'll re- go through it after. I, w- I will tell you what they are. I've got three of the five already. No, you haven't. <laughs> I did. You haven't. It's wrapped up in what I just said. Say it then. <laughs> word for word. I don't know word for word. P. <laughs> I'll be honest. I can't. If I if I was to, uh, if I was to, so, I'll be uh, honest. Uh, 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 right, if I was to close it. Much. All right. Go on. Go oh on. yeah. If I was to close it, I will not be able to read them word for word. All right, I've but opened, for the for the for the people at home, I've opened the book now, and I think even about two minutes ago, I mentioned <laughs> refrain from generalizing the conflict. I said I made a ref a point to say that you should keep the 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 discussion or quarrel to the topic at hand and not let it drift. Yeah, that was that prior is the same to the question. Thing. That was prior. I to said the question. love thy neighbor, which is the same thing <laughs> as show basic concern for the other person's well being. Yeah. <laughs> Maintain focus on the problem at hand. Once again, wrapped up, wrapped up within, keep it on the topic at hand. The other two are just obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Look, effectively communicate feelings and needs, which, okay, I didn't get that one, but it's, it's an obvious one. Ah, uh, you didn't get it though. So. And be willing to engage. And you think. didn't get that. Either, neither one of you. Between two of you, you can't get them. So, French you know. is just a problem, child. <laughs> Mm. Alright, so we're going to actually explain what they are. Mm -hmm. So the first one being, show basic concern for the other person's well-being. Mm -hmm. Second being, maintain focus on the problem at hand. Mm -hmm. Three, refrain from generalising the conflict. Four, be willing to engage. And five, effectively communicate feelings and needs. Um, As you were saying, Mace, that there are a few stories for each one so because they're quite good actually I mean we can we can address a couple of them is there any in particular that you wanted to go through uh, I quite liked um, I think it's Frank and Sandy I think it's on page 246 yeah that's the first, the first one. one Yeah, is that the first one yeah. yeah Cottage in the Berkshires is that the one yeah right I remember this one now right so Sandy's someone who li- either Frank or Sandy one of them is someone who like really likes the city city life and one Frank. of them really likes Frank the great loves outdoors. The outdoors yeah right Frank loves the great outdoors Sandy likes the city life mm-hmm. so what they do or what they to, to, to obviously make the relationship work what Frank will do is if he notices that Sandy is like if, if oh, do you want me to explain it no I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> right so Sandy Sandy loves the city life Frank loves the great outdoors yeah, explain. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so just on the notes, basically, it took a few bit of fights before they realised that each partner was insisting on his or her wishes and ignoring the other and ignoring the others and they ended up both making them unhappy. Mm-hmm. So they found a system that worked despite their inherent differences in the way um they wanted to actually spend their own time. Yeah. So they both had an understanding that the fundamental premise of a good relationship is that the other person's well-being is as important as their own. Ignoring your partner's needs will have a direct impact on your own emotion, satisfaction level, and even and even physical health. Mm-hmm. So, in that in that sense, there there was a compromise. When one was feeling a bit antsy and wanted to get out of the city, mm-hmm. uh, Sandy would make recognize sure that, that. she yeah. would recognize that and they'll yeah. take a few days out, and vice versa. When uh, Frank could see that Sandy didn't want to really want to be out of the city, he would find other activities to do within the city that would almost uh, scratch his itch for doing something outdoors. Yeah. Okay, I remember that story now. Um, sure you do. What was the second? Was it maintain focus on the problem at hand? That was the second. Um, yeah, that's right? George, George and right. George I know this message, one. Please. George and Kelly. Do you want to say that I know one? This one. Go Go ahead. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've gone through them so I'm right, sure I know you can do the next one right, so George, George and Kelly yeah. uh, oh yeah it's fine so George and Kelly is either they've ever been on one or two dates or they've been out on a date um, been for a coffee some, uh, no sorry Kelly's do you want me to explain no <laughs> um, they've walked they're, either, they're walking past George's apartment or Kelly's dropping George off or they're in a taxi dropping off and what happens is Kelly's expecting George to invite her up to his place 
and George actually turns around and says it's being renovated yeah. to which Kelly believes oh because Kelly has an anxious attachment style by the way Kelly believes oh he's obviously got another woman that stays there or I'm going to go up they're going to the bathroom to see someone's toothbrush and she starts making all these anxious feelings and thoughts they start running through her head but the good thing about George being such a secure chap that he is he recognises that these anxieties have kicked in and the very next day he actually invites Kelly over the, the main reason he didn't want her to come up to his apartment was because it's actually a tip it's a complete mess and he says you know what I like this girl she obviously likes me. I can tell she's got anxiety issues. Let me just invite her up and she can make her mind up. So he invites her in the next day. She sees the place is a mess, but the relief for her is enormous. And George recognised that that's what she needs. She just needed, she, she needed a reassurance that he's only seeing her. And it's, all it is, his place isn't being renovated. He hasn't, got, he hasn't got, you know, two, three girls staying every night. It's <laughs> just the fact that he was a little bit ashamed. But in fact, Kelly doesn't care about that because she cares about him. And obviously, if they do get in the relationship, they can work on compromise. Mm. Um, what was the next principle? You you want to do the next one, P? Um, so let me see. What was the next one? It's refrain from generalising the conflict. Yo, I thought this was absolute madness, actually. <laughs> what, is this the one over the shopping? Yeah, Terry and Alex. Okay, like, but my, I, in fact, I didn't really take too much notes in this. I just literally wrote, what, look, I thought, what did I write down? Um, I mean, details are important to me, too. Yeah. I mean, but pasta? Like, I mean, these well, are let the few, people at home okay, who haven't cool. got the book. Let, All right, so a bit of a I'm not too sure it was Alex or Terry. Yeah. Um, but one sent someone out to go do some shopping. They also been given a, a shopping list of yeah. which some of the contents were pasta, um, pasta sauce. I think some chopped tomatoes and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm not too sure, as I said before, whether it's Alex or Terry. Yeah. They've come back obviously from doing the shopping, and some of the contents to which he's brought back. Um, are not exactly the same so it might be a different brand or might be slightly different so one, so of, one of them's a stickler for like detail yes yes yeah. yes and yes, the, yes, other yes. One's, the other one's more like alright so they want tomatoes it doesn't matter if I get this range of tomatoes correct. it's tomatoes correct yeah. correct correct, yeah. correct yeah so uh, I want to get it right so I think it was a couple of hours um yeah so Alex is the person who sent Terry out as such so when um, Terry has come back in um, from doing the shopping obviously Alex is kind of um, a thrown a strop in regards to um, what Terry has actually brought back home and I think he's gone out and he's done the shopping himself am I right in saying so? Mm-hmm. yeah I mean from what I wrote down anyway I'm, I'm actually I like detail as well but yeah. I mean I thought to myself are we really arguing over pasta and, and chopped tomatoes in 2017? well I don't know when the book was written so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 <laughs> it, might been, it might have been a number nah, year but... I mean, nah, I, mean I, <laughs> okay, I, I love bro. detail as well but really chopped tomatoes and pasta? yeah but do you know what I could see myself being yeah, uh, being like I that. can be like, like that yeah if, if there's yeah. a particular brand of I don't know cola bottles I like you go on if I like Haribo and you can go and get me I don't know some random ones from the shop I'm not going to eat them yeah, yeah. I've told you which ones I want to get yeah and yeah, no, I'm like that do you know what I'm saying like and, it's simple. and for me that shows not uh, lack of respect is a big word but it shows that you don't really care much about what I, about yeah, about well, what's important to me mm. it doesn't matter how small it is because yeah. what I see is if you're like on a small scale you can be like on a big scale too yeah does that make sense? It's not true, but I mean, I'm, I'm more concerned with the way that this person has thrown a strop as such. I mean, thrown up, lost his temper and ended up doing the shopping himself. No, it's the woman's called Terry. Either way, the person's <laughs> lost their temper and gone and, do the, done, gone and done the shopping themselves. Was there really a need to actually throw a strop? How did they get around? How did they, obviously, they want the relationship to work. So how, what was the, how did they resolve this? I think um, Alex has just um, decided from, now, from here on in that he would do the shopping. I think it was a bit more detailed than there that. There was a bit more detail. If I'm honest, once yeah. I saw this, I kind of yeah. like, I want to say I skipped past it as such, but I thought it was really, really petty as such. Yeah. Because this, this section of the book's all about compromise, so what happened with Terry and Alex is, to resolve this, it didn't make sense for, um, who was going to do shopping this year? Was it Alex? Yeah. 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 It didn't make sense for Terry to keep sending Alex to the shop and keep getting the same result. She knows that Alex is a bit spaced. That sounds like a weed smoker to me, but anyway. He's a bit... Because <laughs> it was yeah, space yeah, cadet. Exactly, space, <laughs> space, <laughs> spaced out or space cadet. Space cadet. <laughs> so it sounds like he's, you know, he's, he's bunning the herbs. But anyway, <laughs> why would you keep sending someone out knowing they keep bringing the wrong things back? So, in the day of technology and iPhone all the rest of it give them a list with the actual give them a list with the actual specification of what you I'm want I'm still caught up with the or, space cadet or, or, that was funny. I'm dark, or, or phone him the, or phone him when he's in the supermarket or phone him when he's in the supermarket and um and let him know what you want or get him to phone you like stop sending them out with about 17 things on your list and when he comes back with three of them which are slightly wrong you're having a shot see but that's what really annoyed me I mean you can't keep sending people out and then be upset when they come back I mean you can be upset <coughs> but I mean Surely you've got to take responsibility for continually sending this person out to go get your snacks or go get your pasta and this person keeps coming back with the wrong ingredients. Mm. 
I know there's a thing obviously called compromise and stuff, yeah. and stuff like that, but you know, I can see the issue from both sides. But at the same time, how could it's, the important thing is how can we work on this? You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was an interesting one. Uh, the other, the other two were be willing to engage. So I can't remember that was. Um, oh, that's be willing to engage is just to demonstrate how the th- the three stories we just mentioned, how they will work and what they did to resolve um, the issues they were having. And then effectively communicate feelings and needs. Um, who was that? Oh, that was something, that was Tom and Rebecca, it was something to do with visiting, Tom going to visit Re- um, Rebecca's sister on a Saturday and he wanted to stay in. And it was more about Rebecca who just wanted to spend time with Tom, but she wasn't effectively communicating that she threw a kind of struggle yeah. protest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was she anxious, Rebecca? It doesn't mention that, I don't okay. think. No, I think it does say she was anxious, yeah. Yeah, she was anxious. Yeah. And she couldn't effectively communicate the fact that all she wanted was to spend time with Tom because she hadn't seen him that week. He'd mm-hmm. been out working all week. And he never goes to her sisters, but she wanted to come that particular day, but was going the wrong way about it, basically. Mm. Um, French, you're normally the man with the plan. <laughs> you got any questions for us? Um, honestly, no, I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I generally actually don't. I mean, I took a few notes yeah. in terms of what kind of paragraph stood out for me but in terms of questions nothing really came up that I thought was relevant or I couldn't just kind of answer as it came to me do you mm-hmm. know what I mean so I mean do you guys have anything that I've got you've kind of read through and, and thought that would be a good I've got a question, question to pose yeah I've got a question just for the people at home and yeah. they don't necessarily have to hit us up and answer but just within your own relationship is there is there a task or a kind of an activity you give your partner to regularly do and he or she always messes it up and yet you keep giving it to them and you haven't thought to yourself, well, how can I work around this? Or is there, do you have a communication issue within your relationship in terms of effectively communicating where it starts with something small because of the reaction you get, it goes off on a tangent. All of a sudden you're not even, the, the, the topic of discussion or the topic you're arguing about is not even what you started off with. It's now getting into other other realms of someone always being at clubbing or some some rubbish and it started off from something completely different such as hoovering or something like that. Um, so yeah, look, think about how you can effectively communicate with your partners at home to kind of help to uh, resolve quarrels or regular calls that you, that you tend to have. Uh, one of the things that stood out for me was the, the preventing conflict and the attachment biology part. Okay. Which is a bit of a fun read. That's on mm-hmm. page 251. Mm-hmm. <laughs> where it mentions sometimes understanding the basic biology of attachment helps you prevent a conflict before it even happens. Oxytocin, a hormone and neuropeptide, plays a a major role in attachment processes and severs several purposes. And severs several purposes. It causes women to go into labour, strengthens attachment and serves as a social cohesion hormone by increasing trust and cooperation. We get a boost of oxytocin oxytocin <coughs> sorry in our brain during orgasm and even when we cuddle hence the cuddle hormone okay by foregoing the closeness with our partners we are also missing our oxytocin boost making us less agreeable to the world and even vulnerable to conflict okay. so yeah no, it's good to to cuddle in the morning basically is what it's saying mm-hmm. you get a release of oxytocin so that's one way of preventing co- conflict before it can even begin is when you wake up in bed with your partner, give her a hug or give him a hug. Or oh, if you have no partner, <laughs> 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 if you have no partner at home. Alternatively, <laughs> <laughs> hug your pillow. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, as I said, there wasn't much else that I kind of thought I could bring any questions to you guys. Things that I, I will mention that I think would be a good read for anyone that's also reading alongside. Um, How to Make Secure P- Principles Work For You, which is on page 256. And again, in, in, Insecure Conflict Strategies to Avoid on 257. Then again, the next page, a workshop in Conflict Strategies on 258. Now, reading through those, I found it quite um, straightforward. So it wasn't really a anything that I thought was worth questioning but yeah. I think at the end of this chapter there was a few it poses a few scenarios so maybe it might be good to kind of read through it like see that the, the workshop the workshop in conflict strategies if we do it live now and kind of see 
what are the reactions? Yeah. Are you ready to do, do that? Do a couple yeah, of yeah, this is stories. Right. One's Marcus and there's a few others. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off on the first one, Marcus. Yeah. So um, Marcus booked a mostly singles cruise to Brazil before he and Daria started dating six months ago. I've been Marcus. I've done, I've, <laughs> I, said, I said, I've booked a holiday. Yeah. Back in the day, when you go to them kind of raver yeah, yeah, yeah. islands with your boys. Yeah. And I started dating someone. I've after, done that. After yeah, yeah. I booked it. So I'd already booked someone I was going with my guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously when you book it, you know what you mean. Yeah. And then like, I started dating someone after I booked it. Yeah, yeah no, I've, 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 had, that. I've had that. I've had that still. I've mm. had that. So Daria doesn't feel comfortable with Marcus going on such a trip without her. She doesn't like cruises. When she raises the subject to Marcus, he responds, so I have to do everything with you now. You don't like stuff that... <laughs> that was funny. You don't like stuff like that anyway, so why do you care? Besides, I've already paid for it. What do you want me to do? Lose three grand. So is Marcus' reaction secure or insecure? Marcus's reaction is insecure. Mm. It's definitely insecure. Um, and the reason it's insecure is because he doesn't deal with Daria's, con- Daria's concern. Mm. Her concern is, what it sounds like to me, is that, and this is what the, the reason I the reason I think this is right is because I had this this is the same concern I got to me yeah, yeah, yeah. was that you're going over there to do whatever you booked before you dating anyone you know what you're going to do you're going to have complete fun and you're not even going to think about me and I think you're basically going to commit adultery. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So his reaction is insecure because he's, he's bypassed the, the, the. He's trying to change a topic. He's trying to change. See what I spoke about before? He's trying to change that topic. Yeah. He's he, trying to now move it into what well, you're making me waste three bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, when I read it, actually, it didn't yeah. actually first say. I know um, Dara's response, or later in the chapter, it goes on to say that it was a singles holiday. But when you first read it, it actually mm. says mostly singles. Yeah. Now, what would you do? I mean, because it's mostly singles, it doesn't necessarily mean As in that the you're... group that, he, that he's going with is mostly singles. So no, nah, he's not no, he's going on his own. Mostly singles cruise to Brazil. Well, you know what's going on over there. No, of course, we, no. I mean, we know what Derek. What's his name? Marcus. No, huh? we know what Marcus is thinking when he's booked the trip to Brazil. <laughs> we all know. Party. <laughs> we all know what he's thinking when he's booked the trip to Brazil. What I'm saying though is like, I know her response or the response in the in the book is said that it's a it's a singles trip. Yeah. But I mean, if you read the introduction of it, it says they're mostly singles. So I mean. Yeah. What is that her inter- interpretation that it's a singles trip and he's going to get up to all this fun or is that just I would, I'd assume so okay what would you do what do you mean what would you do would you what go on the trip booked? yeah have you booked I've been in that situation so, I so went answer. to the holiday he just turned oh, his phone off to the, to the afternoon no not at all <laughs> not, not at all no but obviously I've explained it to her like mm. where I was going like, I can go on those kind of holidays genuinely and, mm. and, and be easy like I can genuinely just go to have fun and party whatever so like obviously if I I can explain that with conviction and actually mean it not bullshit and like I know you look like convenient now. no 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 I'm, I'm like, actually oh, whatever. but no generally I could go on like a, a lad's holiday and not fucking get up to mischief do you know what I mean because when I was reading the first thing I thought to myself I mean oh she, she's worried and naturally I definitely understand that hmm. then I sat there and I thought to myself I know there's six months into the in fact does it even say relationship or yeah, yeah, dating. Yeah, yeah, the dating. Dating. Yeah. yeah, so that. What? I mean, so for yeah, me, oh, it's, it's, open, it's kind yeah. of open to <laughs> interpretation. No, okay, let, let, let's, let's, it's let's, open to interpretation, okay. though. Alright, let's walk in. Six months of. For me, you're kind of working towards something. You shouldn't be looking to check anything else. Six months into something. You, ha- you can't be. You can't be looking. I to don't check disagree something. with that. Alright, but I, I'm trying to understand what are we back but if, for? If, but if lines haven't been drawn, it's like. I've, I, and he's already pre-booked it from before there was dating yeah. or so, so he, he he's not in a wrong for going yeah. but if he if he puts it across cause as I said I've been in a similar situation so if he puts it in across like yes I did go I did book it when I was single and yeah. whatever or not and the intention was to go with the boys and whatever or not mm-hmm. we are where we are but I'm still going to go and have fun not the fun that I may have originally gone to have mm-hmm. but I'm still going to be with my people I'm still going to have fun but how he's addressed it is like you're coming at me like let me just do my thing back up like I'm not trying to lose my peas and <coughs> like you said he's kind of turned it into something else where mm-hmm. he should have just addressed the matter at hand which was the fact that she's going to feel insecure about him going onto a place where Mason you going uh, whoa <laughs> yeah right one that well no I'm not trying to I'm not going to no nah, try you're trying to do the situation right my thing is so do you think Marcus knowing he's booked this trip it's six months or seven months down the line. 
was irresponsible in allowing himself to get involved in a situation where Dario or Dario now feels she's got she's she's in a situation to question what he's going to be doing on holiday. As in, should from the start he said, or should have made it clear, look, I've got this trip. These are my reasons for booking it. I'm going to have fun. I don't know what that fun will entail, but it, I booked it as a singleton. So I'm letting you know that now. I do like you. I have feelings, but I don't want to get too involved right now because it's not fair on you. Should that have been how he approached the situation? Um, That's I my first so. question. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere the down the The second line, question yeah. now is, should he be reassuring her that he's not going to do anything? Or, no, should, he he be, or should he be open and honest and say, I don't know? Yeah. If he, if he really doesn't know, like, yeah. don't lie to her. Like, mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. Because I've been in a situation where I've lied and it's just like, end up blowing up in your face. And I've learned from that. I don't lie to girls no more. I just keep oh, it time that is. Third question off the back of that. Mm. What if Dario through a span in work said, I'm going to give you back the three grand? Or, I'm, you, or I'm going to come with you. I'll pay and come with you. But if that's not, if you're if you booked a holiday, if he's willing to have her on the on the on the cruise, mm. cool, and he's happy, then fine, crack on, let's go do this thing together. But if he's like, no, nah, I was intended to go by myself or whoever I'm going with, mm. my team or whatever, mm-hmm. that's what it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Like as long as you're honest and you keep it a hundred with her, then whatever situation is gonna be, she's gonna she's gonna know what it is where she stands. Right, question to both of you. What out of those the options I've given? What would you do? Like, if if this was you in that situation, would you turn, be up front straight? What? How would you approach it? And be honest. Depends, how, yeah. because you might be six months dating. I was gonna say, what is on, it? on the, in the relationship and be like, all right, we're just genuinely dating. We have an understanding that yeah, where we could be seeing other people, or we're still dating other people if we feel to, or it could be a case of we're six months deep in the dating thing and I'm really feeling her or she's mm-hmm. really feeling me. Mm-hmm. I can see a possibility of it going somewhere. So it depends on where you both stand in, in that six months of dating. Devil's Advocate, to me, and I don't know, it might be just between me, it comes across like, the, the reaction Darius Darry has had, it comes across that it's not an open thing. It's six months of dating and we're working towards something and we're not, neither of us are checking anyone else. That's how it comes across to me from the question she's asked. Mm. Yeah, the way she's come across, yes. Yeah, but but you're asking from our yeah, point of view, from Marcus's point of view. So what is Marcus's point of view? Me? Mm-hmm. I'm going, I think. Yeah, I'm no, not disputing we, we, that. We all say... We're yeah, we're all go. We're That's all yeah. going. But yeah. how do you... Pro- would you, for instance, if you knew you... If you met someone tomorrow, say you're going... <clears throat> I don't know where you're going. Columbia or something, whatever. Columbia. Columbia. I don't know where you go. You're going to somewhere where the women are off the chain and all this block here. Yeah? You and already you... know. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you booked all it by yourself with a couple singleton guys, yeah? And then a month after you start, you met someone, you thought, and you started to meet up with them just because, you know, it's it's new, it's fresh, and it's, you don't know if it's friends, you know what it is, you just, you just like this person's vibe. But then it gets five, six months deep now, Pete. Yeah. From the start, are you saying I've got this holiday booked and this is the reason I booked it and I, I don't like I don't know what's gonna happen, or are you saying you know what, I, are you saying, what does my man say? I like you enough. Is that Tion Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <Yeah>. That's Jay Hart. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, um, you're saying now you're saying I like you and blah blah blah, and uh, are you gonna now <laughs> are you gonna refrain from doing certain activities in, in, in um, South? Now I'm feeling you. I'm I'm gonna refrain from. Any extracurricular activities? If you're to go to Brazil, yeah, I can honestly, yeah. I can, I can um, refrain. What about and what about if it was the cards on the table? She said, "You know what? I can afford to go. Can I join you on the trip? How would you feel about that? Um, what would you prefer? Would you prefer? Would you prefer to just lay it? I'm not going to do anything. And I know P. If mm. he's not going to do it, he's not going to do it. Yeah, I get that. But would you prefer that? Or would you say, do you know what? We're getting on well. Let's do you know Come. I'm open to that as well. She, if she says she's keen to come, mm. then I, I, yeah, I'm down. But I think because Marcus was like saying you're not really into this kind of going on cruises. Mm-hmm. That's why it's a bit like... He went straight hesitant. for it, bro. And juggler. You don't like cruises. You don't like this. Hmm. What about yourself? Um, I am... And you look and shoot me if you think I'm lying. I think from the start... Ah, two things. I'm From the start, I'm telling the person that um, I've booked this and this was the reason I booked it. But if we got... Um, and I'll try I'll just probably try no do you know what I'd probably try not to get myself too involved in that situation 
So keep it loose, like lads like, said, like kind of loose day in. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. So let, as one of the points you raised was, well, we're in a situation where we can date other people. I'll try and keep it like that, yeah. and I'll be open and honest and say, look, this is the reason I booked. I don't know what's gonna happen, but this is the reason I booked. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Um, I'll be open also to the person coming if I'm feeling them that much. Yeah. Um, and but I think the first thing I'll try and do is actually not try and get myself involved in something too serious if I know I've got that trip booked and the kind of reasons I've, I've booked. I mean, that seems like you're kind of like cutting off your blessings, boy. That's, that's the way. Yeah. I mean, I just it's, try to let things flow. Yeah, yeah, it's true. To an extent. That's why I say. I mean, if, I, if we get to a stage where I'm definitely feeling you and the, the trip is now like is now here as such, I mean, I still think I'll go and just let her know that obviously I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get up to nothing. And I, in an ideal situation, she would come with me. But if it's a lad's holiday. Boy, you, it's on the lads' holiday. You're with all the man. Then oh no, she can't come then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, right, obviously, but I'm saying, like, you're you're six months in, and you're going with all the man. Then like, you've been hyping it for a minute now, mm. and you get there, you touch down, you're waved, you're bat. There's a lot of beautiful ladies around. Are you gonna be like? Can I say what what are we classing as flirting? What what? Where's that come from? No, 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 you're with your guys, all right? You're having a good time, Uh all right? It's not a case of um, females coming in your face and you're. I think you've got to be really, really careful in terms of what you do and such, but. Oh, I'm, I'm single. So, no, sorry, I'm, I'm in a relationship. No one, sorry, like, no one does that. No, but I mean, there's going to be some type of interaction. Yeah. Yeah, which is fine. In my, in my books, in my books, look, if for me, like, my mind has evolved now. I'm not 18 <laughs> anymore, yeah? If I'm with a female, she's getting approached. Look, everyone gets approached or, or yep. tries to approach your missus, yeah? Don't get it twisted. If you're if you're if you've got a girlfriend and she's half decent, whether it's looks so she gets approached or bibbed on the road, whatever it is, or whether she's got a great personality, so in the workplace people are drawn to her, whatever, they get approached, isn't it? And it's just it's just you having that trust and faith in your other half that you know what? They can hold a conversation with someone, but at the same time be like dutiful enough to say, I'm I'm quite happy with who I'm with and where I am and you know what, you seem like a nice person. But it's not going to just know it's not going to any further. I don't mind chilling or cracking joke. You seem like banterous, whatever. I'm quite happy with that. If my female can can demonstrate those kind of um, attributes when they're speaking to someone, I'm absolutely fine. You can spend the whole night with someone, but just know where to draw the line. If they're trying to come across a certain way, you need to know where to draw that line and say, it's that's not it, or it's not that. Mm. Right? Do you get what I'm saying? That wasn't yeah. the point I was making. What I was actually saying was, if you're with the man then, and you're out, you're out and about, you're getting... Not to say you get a lot to any badness, but you're with all the men, and you're in this. You're just fresh in this relationship. Everyone's with girls, and everyone's surrounded. Are you? Are you really going to be that deep in that relationship? That I'm not cheating. Would you consider it cheating? No. I, so what have I done? Or what am I going to do? Yeah. Well, you've been approached. You approached a lady that likes you. You possibly could go take it further than just talking. Now, loyalty is means a hell of a lot to me. I'm not. I'm not cheating. So you would consider it cheating? Or talking? No, taking it further. Yeah, taking it further, yeah, because we all know... Um, we, I don't want to say we all know what taking it further is, but taking it yeah. further is exploring the possibilities. Mm. So you wouldn't? I wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, yeah, cool. Um, so the answer was... Yeah, go on. It was insecure, as we discussed. And... Um, yeah, as as you said, he generalised the conflict and attacks her by mentioning the three thousand dollars or three bags or whatever. Mm-hmm. Pick um, the secure tactics Marcus should have used was the best piece of advice for Marcus would be to maintain focus on the problem at hand. Mm-hmm. Darius concern is real, and as long he as long as he doesn't address it, this issue will never be resolved. So yeah. Do so, another one? Yeah, I'll do yeah. another one. I, I quite like these examples. So, people at home, um, we'll do another example, and you can you can let us know your opinion whether it's secure or insecure. So, you've got Steve. Steve's been dating um, Maya, Mia. Would you say how do you pronounce it? Maya or Mia? Steve's been dating Maya. <laughs> no, I don't, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Steve's been dating Mia for a few weeks. Calls on Friday oh, afternoon to ask if she'd like to join him and his friends that night at the local bar. Mia gets upset because Steve almost always wants to meet her with his friends, while she prefers a one-to-one rendezvous. You're really scared of being alone with me, huh? I don't bite, you know, she, she says half-jokingly. After an awkward silence, Steve replies, well, call me later if you want to go, and hangs up. Right, is Steve's reaction 
Is Steve's reaction secure or insecure? And is, my, is Mia's reaction secure or insecure? French, this one's on you. That's insecure. For who, Steve? Yeah, definitely. Tell me why. For you to say, well, call me later if you, if you want to go, it's, it's a bit like... Is it protesty, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit like... I mean, it's very shut in the door. Like, I'm not even trying to entertain the, the aspect of just them being alone, do you know what I mean? Because he's like, all right, well, just call me later. You shut it off. He's basically yeah, shut yeah, it I off. don't want to hear anymore. Yeah. Maybe he's in a rush. You know, sometimes people just, they, they just get on your nerves sometimes. It's no, like, but it's happened for a few times, though, isn't it? Okay, fair dues. What's your thoughts, Pete? Yeah, I kind of echo that. I mean, I feel he's a bit insecure and he kind of just shut down the conversation straight away. Did it say that he's never, not he's never, but I mean, he doesn't often go out of her alone? Yeah. Yeah, it makes reference to that. He makes, yeah, he makes his friends come along. Yeah, I don't know what that's about either. That's I, what I'm saying. That's a bit like, that's insecure, bro. Like, you can't be a secure person and always have your mates there when you're going on a date. Like, what I say? It's even a lack of personality. Well, can't you entertain me or something? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying it's a lack of his person, but I mean, it can, it can come across like that, that you need loads of other different distractions in and around you to kind of like enjoy the night with your, I'm assuming your girlfriend or someone you're seeing. Yeah. I mean, I've never gone on dates and needed my friends to be there. Do you know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised. I'm not saying, I mean, you'd be surprised. I, I, there's def- I reckon there's definitely people out there who need extra support. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But after a few dates, you do need to have that one-on-one time. Mm-hmm. Um, what about um, Mia? What about her? Well, she it's, it's her. Does her attachment come across as secure or insecure? I think it's secure because she she um, she doesn't broach it in a angry way. She says it in a. She said you're really scared of being alone with me, hard, but in a joke anyway. So it's not like she's showing any aggression or any kind of um, protest behaviour in any sort of way. So I think it's she's a. Pro- I think she broached the subject. In a roundabout way, yeah, but I think is, shouldn't it be more direct? Yeah, for, it for could, effective I communication. Could, could be, yeah, you could say communi- it could, community. It could be strewed as sarky. <sighs> you know, but say, is that? Would you say that's insecure? Because in the book, I think it says it's insecure, doesn't it? I'm going to come on to that. All right, so I think it says insecure. All right, and when I read that, I thought to myself, I'm not too sure. I mean, sometimes being direct. I know it's effective communication by being direct, yeah, but sometimes yeah. being too direct can come across a bit stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's she's been so she's been a bit sarky and had a bit of humour to it to kind of like maybe he will open up and say X Y Z. That's the yeah, why. Yeah. It's never just them two. So I, 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 I was kind of at conflict. Actually, actually, I was actually in conflict with actually what the book said. I didn't think it was insecure. Yeah, you're right. So the book does says Mia um, is insecure because. Her attempt to effectively communicate her needs sounded a bit too much like an attack. To me, it didn't sound like an attack. That's what I was trying to say, though. I would say something like that. Yeah, like I would actually say in a joking way. Yeah, but said in a half-hearted way. Um, But what the book goes on to say, which could have helped to give us some bloody backdrop, is (laughs) she would now be left wondering: Did I upset him? Did I? Did he think I was criticizing him? Which is obviously the the signs of an anxious, yeah, yeah, kind of um, relationship. But the book could could have helped us there. And you you look spot on. Steve's insecure. he didn't even try to find out what's on Maya's mind. He just, he simply vanished. That's the yeah, he cut it off. He cut it yeah. off. He shut it off and was like, He Gosh. simply vanished. There was something else I wanted to raise, actually. Um, so we spoke about, the book actually makes reference to a bread and butter... Conflict. A, a bread and butter type of conflict. Mm. There's another type of conflict, I think. It's called um, intimacy, I think intimacy central conflict or something like that. Okay. Where's that? Uh, I'm going to find it for you now. It's on page. And I can't find the page number, but there is another type of conflict because there's a story, but and it's um it's on the, pe- the story's on page 253 and it's Paul and Jackie. I read that, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. And Paul is someone who's got He's got three kids and he just refuses to let Jackie meet his kids, even though him, he and Jackie have been together quite yeah, a while. He speaks about his kids a lot to Jackie. Even, I think he has a conversation. I think he and Jackie's dad go for a walk and, you know, um, Jackie's dad explains how much he likes Paul and Paul says how much he's into Jackie. He's always speaking about his kids. Everyone knows who, that he's got three kids, but he, he just refuses to let Jackie meet his kids. Mm. So Paul will say to Jackie, oh, I love you. And Jackie won't respond because she's like, if you love me, you let me meet your kids. Mm. But then because Jackie's not saying I love you back, Paul's like, well, how do I know this is going to last? Yeah. So I'm not going to let you meet my kids. I'm not going to get 
like make them go through that kind of um, disturbance. Yeah. So it's kind of like a catch twenty two, but it all boils down to the lack of effective communication. Yeah, definitely. So that's um, that's another type of conflict, intimacy conflict, which is it was a quite a good story actually. It goes on for about two and a half pages. But I think that quite there's there's other examples of the um, of the of the, um, the scenarios which uh, French Pox and I just went through, which you can read for at home. Check out in the book attached. No, sorry, yeah. I just, I'm actually. You know, it's funny because I looked. At, I looked at the story. Well, maybe I rushed through the story, but I looked at it a little bit differently, oh, just wow. ever so slightly differently. I'm talking about the Jackie and the um, Paul situation. Oh. I mean, I was actually a little bit dis- disappointed in Paul in that. Mm-hmm. I think after I think is the argument, and he ran. Up, I don't want to say he ran away. In fact, he might have said he ran away, or he left and he didn't like turn up for three weeks. But I mean, I think there's definitely um, issues, certainly between the two of them, in that. Jackie, who I'm assuming, obviously, with her family and friends, believed they should be a little bit closer, or certainly should have met. He should have. She should have met um, his children by that that point in time. But at the same time, you got um, Paul, who's actually suggesting they should potentially buy a house together. But at the same time, um, she hasn't met your kids. I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, what's going on here? Do you know what this reminds me of? Mm. Do you guys watch Power? Yeah. Remember Ghost and Angie situation? Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, but they was in some fairy tale thing, like. It wasn't, they was talking it, but it wasn't like, it was almost like they forgot about the actual reality of things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With that situation. She, she did meet his kids in the end though. Cause there was yeah, a, eventually. Yeah, yeah. there's a period where she kept saying, you know, the kids, but you're yeah. right. It was, it was, yeah, it was slightly different. I mean, like the question, obviously, when you intru- when do you introduce your children? Obviously, maybe a sub question, but I mean, I agree with Paul in regards to, I think the timing, obviously introducing your kids. Um, what I didn't quite understand is that she, I feel, I mean, assuming obviously by obviously the way I read the story, that she wanted to be obviously a bit more involved in his life in that they've been together for a year. So you're assuming someone obviously wants to invest time in you as such. But um, I wanted to say, obviously, she loves you, but or I wanted to say, sorry, she loves you, which should be an obvious, but her not expressing that is another issue altogether, really. I don't know why she hasn't responded in by, by saying, obviously, I love you in all that time that obviously they've been together. Um, obviously Keen is mustard to meet his kids but can't say I love you I think that's definitely a, a red a red card or certainly a red flag anyway um, but on Paul I don't understand as I mentioned before why you'd be raising an important topic such as um, moving in when you haven't quite actually yeah, allowed sure your partner to they're starting to look for a house she, they're going to need to accommodate the fact that his kids might still I think it's bonkers mate and then, then there's the fact that I mean she's talking about how not that she did, they didn't spend enough time together but um, there's times obviously where he would be away. I'm thinking he was away every other weekend with his kids. That's not. I mean, but I think they lived together, didn't they? Yeah. So what's she moaning about? That's what I was thinking. What's she moaning about? I think if you read deeply in the story, yeah. I think there's, I think there's a point in where. Terms of what? In terms of um, him being away during certain periods, or him I being away. Think, no, she just wants to meet the kids. I mean, no, but I think if you if yeah. not, not if you read deeply. I know you read the story, mm-hmm. but I mean if you read deeply into the story, I think there's parts in it where she's. Um, not questioning as such, but kind of like, um, yeah. But she's not quite happy that he's away, at, away at certain periods. I can't quite. I know that the main kind of the main kind of points from the story was the whole kids thing and the lack of effective communication. I don't even think the relationship ended up lasting. To be honest, well, I, I can't see that lasting. <laughs> but then I don't even understand. Obviously, like, why didn't he tell the dad? Like he's had a conversation with dad, and you're assuming the conversation went all, all, all hunky dory. He's come home to his missus, and he's all playing quiet. No, he's bitching. Yeah, no, that's what he's doing. Yeah. You know, the moment I read that part, I thought, oh, brilliant. He's had a nice, re- nice, clear conversation with dad. He's going to come home, explain something to us, to his missus, and then he's doing all the quiet game. I think, what's that about? <laughs> this guy's not serious, man. And then he went and ran away for like two, three weeks. <laughs> I'm quite surprised. I'm really disappointed that he didn't actually explain to the dad, this is the reason why mm. she hasn't met this person or that person, and then, then communicated obviously with his partner. You seem quite attached to this character. Yeah. No, nah, but I was thinking, this is some real cow- <laughs> cowardice behaviour. Yeah, it's definitely got you amped up. Mm-hmm. Right, guys, as I said, that was... Um, is there anything else? No, that's it yeah. for me, bro. That was um, part two of... Um, of uh, chapter was we just doing? We were doing a secure... The secure um, you should not know this, but off by art. Come on. We were doing a secure way sharpening your relationship skills. That was part two of it. Part one was on our last, our last, our last um, episode. So next time out, we'll actually be doing the epilogue. Of the, of the book and we'll be doing a book review with a special guest someone else who and we'll get a female perspective on it someone yeah. who's read the book and will give us their perspective do be sure to check out our Instagram at full underscore underscore books we've got um, loads of questions on there relevant kind of snaps 
Um, we've got a video. So one of our um, one of our kind of avid listeners who we know really supports the podcast, we decided to take her out for breakfast. Um, we decided to take her out for breakfast and just talk about the book. So as I said, guys, keep tuned. Um, we're on Facebook, all the socials, Twitter. Let us know your thoughts as usual. And we'll also be revealing at the end of the next episode which book's next yeah alright until next time guys <laughs>